Florida State football for 1983 began on a note of suspense, and it ended with blaring trumpets and another postseason bowl victory. and passion of Seminole football is living proof of a proud past and a confident future. was full of surprises for Florida State, starting with their opening game. A solid East Carolina team came to Tallahassee disguised as a patsy. FSU had won the previous two matchups by a lopsided total of 95 points. After an FSU surprise onside kick recovery, Lowry hit Tony Johnson for 25 yards. Then Tom Wheeler for the score. It was 13 to 3 FSU. East Carolina ran and threw past the FSU defense to take the lead 17 to 13. Greg Allen's second touchdown was matched. Cedric Jones scored from the five, only to see the Seminoles go into halftime down 30 to 27. Bobby Bowden and Florida State fans were concerned about this team's defense. The scoring spree continued with Lowry hitting Hassan Jones. And Greg Allen scored his third touchdown. But it would come down to the defense to make two big plays. Defensive back Eric Riley describes his critical interception. As it was late in the fourth quarter and Pat Milligan is coming up on the tight end release and uh, he got a hit on the tight end, which the ball was thrown to it. And the ball kind of just sailed to the air, and I caught it before it uh, hit the ground. A fumble recovery and the Lowry to Tom Wheeler late touchdown pass wrapped up a shaky 47 to 46 opening win for Florida State. The Seminoles were off to Death Valley and LSU. It was a four-game road trip with three top 20 teams. Greg Allen remembers Death Valley. It is a sort of a tough place, uh, and I think it did have an effect on us. You know, and the last time we was there, we got, you know, embarrassed. Any coach in the country needs the opportunity uh, to play in Death Valley in Baton Rouge because I think of all the stadiums we've ever played in, I've never been in one uh, more that works against you. All of the strange and superstitious fears that Coach Bowden had about this place appeared to be coming true. LSU scored on their first drive, and minutes later, the Tigers fumbled their way to another touchdown. Kelly Lowry threw a batted interception, and echoes of last year's 29-point fiasco must have rumbled through the Seminoles. Not so. The defense gritted their teeth and hammered Tiger runs. Brian Williams sacked the quarterback, and the Seminoles cut the LSU lead to 14 to 7. With 41 seconds left before the half, Brian McCrary intercepted and returned it five yards. Lowry took control, hitting Jesse Hester down to the 19. When we got on their one yard line with about 15 or 16 or 17 seconds to go, I think they thought we would kick the three points, but we had a play that we thought would score against them, and uh, Kelly Lowry, our quarterback, executed it perfectly, and that tied the game up, and I think gave us a moment on the rest of the day. The Seminoles spit into the ill win and changed their fate against LSU, scoring 33 unanswered points. With one foot clearly in bounds, Jesse Hester made it 27 to 14. The defense stayed tough and caused two more turnovers. It was time for a classic Greg Allen run. 
28 yards of vintage Allen speed and strength. Lowry scored from the sixth and was named Sports Illustrated's National Offensive Player of the Week. He passed for two TDs and rushed for three more. The Seminoles won it 40 to 35, giving Bobby Bowden's teams four wins in their last five appearances in Death Valley. FSU was two and oh, but Coach Bowden knew something was wrong. The first two ball games, giving up 46 points in one and 35 in the other, was not a good sign, and it did, it scares us. Now, what it makes you do is go out there the next week and the next week with your offense, and you're saying, every time we got the ball, we got to score. We have got to score, and that's kind of dangerous because you start gambling and doing things that are not percentage-wise good uh, gambles. The gambling finally took its toll against Tulane. Losing 34 to 28, the Seminoles' Achilles heel was conspicuously their defense. Fifth-ranked Auburn was next. A roll of the dice here could be disastrous. The odds became even worse when star running back Greg Allen left the game with a sore knee after one play. Auburn scored first. Lowry started doing his part, hitting Ouija Thompson, a six-foot-six converted quarterback, down to the eight. Cedric Jones followed, outstanding blocking for the tying score. The defense stiffened. After a Phil Hall 33-yard field goal, Florida State had a chance to put Auburn on their knees. Lowry avoided the blitz and hit Tom Wheeler for 20 yards. Backup tailback Roosevelt Snipes broke through a hole on the right side and simply outran the Auburn defense, but he mistakenly stepped on the out-of-bounds line. That proved to be the difference as Auburn burned the defense with a touchdown with less than two minutes remaining to pull out a 27-24 win. A missed extra point provided another heartbreaker the following week in a 17 to 16 loss to Pitt. Home looked awfully good to the Seminoles after a month on the road. Game six was against Cincinnati, who had knocked off Penn State earlier, but it was homecoming and a time to celebrate. The faithful knew that the Seminoles still had a knockout punch. Florida State fans and the Cincinnati Bearcats were shocked when the Seminoles took to the field in all gold uniforms. Fate began to smile on the Golden Warriors. Herbert Harp recovered the fumble to make it seven to nothing. After an FSU field goal, the defense, which played brilliantly against Pitt, began to intimidate Cincinnati. Ken Rose smothered the punter at the three. <laughs> Kelly Lowry scored. It was 16 to nothing, and number 45, Isaac Williams, knew what to do. I just have to try to play my game. I have to go out there loose, and I have to be able to play wild. Wild is what the Seminole defense was this night as they crushed the Cincinnati quarterback. Cincinnati scored to make it close at the half, but Rosie Snipes and the defense clobbered the Bearcats into a very rewarding 43-17 victory. FSU demolished Louisville 51-7 at home the next week. The nationally televised game saw All-American running back Greg Allen score three touchdowns. Not bad for a brief appearance and an occasional handshake. This is Greg Allen. And the reason I like to block for him is because he's so fast. See what I mean? Greg Allen will, no doubt, be at the top of the list 
of Heisman Trophy candidates for 1984. Blocking is uh, what make a running back great. When I get the ball and see a hole open, it's just trying to get there in that hole and whatever happens, you know, it's just reaction. I like that straight running. Just hit the hole, you know, just see what happens. Quick, but I'm not Rosie Snipes. Good balance and everything. And then I got a little combined of strength with my run. I think it's the attitude. It has to do with a lot of what you want to be for yourself. Greg Allen most likely wants to be a superstar. His blockers and his coach respect Mr. Allen. Yeah, he, he makes it easy. He just, uh, if you can get out there and, and just block your man for a moment, he'll find the hole and he'll break off you and he'll, make the, he'll get the tough yardage. Greg Allen has been an exceptional runner for Florida State ever since he's been here. Seems like every year he's passed some kind of a milestone. His first year he set a national rushing record for a freshman. And then he set the all-time uh, one-game performance, 419 yards for, for one game of total offense, which still stands today. He did that his freshman year. His next year, he was a leading scorer in the nation with 21 touchdowns and, uh, and, and, and split in time as the tailback. Then this past year, he became a 1,000-yard rusher for the first time, where he rushed for over 1,000 yards. The Seminoles' next game was at Arizona State a game that could have gone either way. This one would have a finish made for Hollywood. The defense was having its finest hour, holding Pac-10 power Arizona State to seven first half points. The defense had to play near perfect football in the second half as one by one, FSU offensive starters fell with injuries. Greg Allen and Cedric Jones were through for the day. The Seminoles took a 14 to 10 lead, but in the fourth quarter, lost their quarterback for the season. Kelly Lowry's knee was shredded after a sack. And Bob Davis, who had thrown a total of 11 passes in four years for Florida State, took over. Rosie Snipes, a sophomore, then ran 38 spectacular yards to give the Seminoles a 20 to 19 lead. And Florida State went for two. Like a veteran, Davis hit Ouija Thompson, and it was 22 to 19. The Sun Devils came back late in the fourth quarter with the go-ahead score, and Bob Davis was given the ball on his own 18-yard line and 88 seconds in which to win the game. On a fourth and five do or die situation, Davis held 80,000 Sun Devil fans at the exits with a clutch 16 yard completion to Tom Wheeler. With 41 seconds left, he found Wheeler again for 11. Davis was on a roll and stunned Arizona State with a 20 yard completion to Hassan Jones. Rattled, Arizona State changed defenses and blitzed. Davis barely got off the pass to Wheeler, who one-handed it and punctured the Sun Devil defense down to the 10. Arizona State was in disarray and called the timeout with 16 seconds left. Bobby Bowden called a play that had Hester on the left and Hassan Jones on the right flying to the goalposts and cutting to the sidelines. Davis saw Hester turn his man around and lofted a pass that seemed to take forever to reach Jesse Hester. The miracle drive ended with six seconds on the clock. It was Bob Davis's win and a grand tribute to a defense that had played their hearts out in this 29-26 win. For Kelly Lowry, the pain was too great to share in the magic of the moment. Crippled with injuries, the Seminoles limped back to the folks who loved them most. Game nine was against South Carolina. There was bowl fever in the stadium this night. Especially when Chief Osceola comes out on Renegade. That's just the excitement is just unbelievable. You just get chill bumps just listening to the crowd. And the balloons go up, and it is, it's just fantastic. Ken Rowe was fantastic in blocking a Gamecock punt. Eric Riley recovered in the end zone for a touchdown, and the defense was in control. 
John McLean led an inspired defense, but South Carolina scored 14 points to lead by four. Davis connected with Ouija Thompson for 39 yards down to the two. Cletus Jones took it in to go ahead 17 to 14, and the Gamecocks tied it at the half. A Seminole fumble helped South Carolina to another score. Davis came back with a pass to Allen, who muscled his way to the six. A few plays later, Davis tried a sneak and lost the ball. An alert Greg Allen pounced on it for the tying score. It was here that Eric Riley made his second big play of the night. He blocked a key field goal attempt, and the momentum shifted to Florida State. It was time for more drama from Bob Davis. Coach Bowden on the sideline was getting nervous. I want my mind to be cool, but I want my, my appearance to be excited because I think it carries over to the play. I want the players to be excited. Oh, Would yeah. you open on a dunk? I mean, what if you get open on a dunk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they move Will over on you. They might move Will over on you. It was a split, so we couldn't tell. Yeah. Who was it, Z, on that third down in uh, 15 while ago? Who was it, Z? Oh, well, well, did they play you zone or man? I thought they lined up in zone, but actually they went with me and ran man. Four, four draw. So if they come over this way, Steve, to play that thing, and four draw go back over there. Inside of 30, they came every time. Came every time, huh? I'm taking you on the off. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. You need to make that trap is there. Now you got to pick your feet up, make some good runs out of it. Oh, they just ate us up. Bobby, we got to do it now, baby. Tell them we got to do it, okay? Okay, let's go. L over 46. L over 46. Come on, man. Let him get you first. We need to get the inside. Yeah. Hey, if it's fourth and real close now, we go for it. Rosie Snipes picked up some key blocks and sailed in for the go-ahead score. The rest was all Florida State. It was a 45 to 30 win despite several offensive mistakes. Good game, man. The good game was that you came back and won it. We uh, we just were not into it, as you could tell, which you kind of expect. You got Miami coming up in Florida. But uh, you did a good job, other than, other than just mental, mental mistakes we made. We, we really penalized ourselves tonight, didn't we? Penalties, interceptions, fumbles, offsides, too many men on the field. Boy, <laughs> to score that many points and do all those bad things, you must be pretty good. You know what we got coming up now? We got Miami. They won today. They're going to come in here about fourth in the nation. Or fifth. They're going to come here fourth or fifth in the nation. Yeah. Well, let's pray. <laughs> Miami did come to Tallahassee fourth in the nation. Their defense was ranked second. Florida State was six and three, and the defense was to face their greatest test of the year. After an early Miami score, David Ponder set the defense on fire with a block punt for a safety. The offense and Cletus Jones moved to the two. Greg Allen bolted over the left side for a 9-7 lead. The defense was playing as though they were possessed. We were taking a lot of flack at the beginning of the season, you know, and all throughout the season. And I think that did make us, you know, come together. Two or three times I got to coach, uh, you know, really knockout shots, you know. For me and uh, Chubb, you know, character, you know, we got to him. We were killing him. Miami had not expected this intense defensive pressure. Bob Davis hit Hassan Jones, and two plays later, took it in himself for a 16-7 lead. The eventual national champion scored later, 
and with time running out, booted a game-winning field goal to steal the win. It was a sour loss, but it highlighted an outstanding defensive effort. The young Seminoles were absolute winners to their fans. Definitely winners. Even when we lose a game, we're winners. Florida State's performance earned them a bid to the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, December the 30th. A final game loss to Florida did little to dampen the excitement of meeting 8-3 North Carolina. Bobby Bowden picked a new quarterback to start the Peach Bowl. In our last ball game with the University of Florida, we had played three quarterbacks. And the one that I thought had moved our football team the best and the most consistent was Eric Thomas. Now, Eric Thomas had not started a game for Florida State before. He had played very few plays. But when he came to Florida State, we kind of felt like he would be our leading quarterback one of these days. Yeah, being that it was the Peach Bowl, and uh, it was a, a big bowl for us to be in, it was, it was very exciting, and I was, you know, had a little bit of butterflies with me. In 20-degree weather, the Seminoles prepared to show a national TV audience that they belonged in the Peach Bowl. This one was being played for pride. Eric Thomas's first touchdown pass was in the face of a furious rush. Offensive linemen, they was giving me a whole lot. Of, of backing, and then after that first touchdown, you know, I, it, you know, I, I really didn't want to, uh, to say, well, that's it, you know, everything's going to be okay. But uh, I knew in the back of my mind that everything would turn out okay. His second was unbelievable for a rookie. He did something that we can't coach, and that's something we need. They came out in the worst defense we could have wanted. If we'd have, if we'd have told them, look, please don't get in this defense, that's what they got in. And it, it should have been a five-yard loss. But when, when Eric Thomas spun around and started looking for the pass, there was a blitz fixing to hit him right in the mouth. And he jumped to the side, threw the football up, something we hadn't practiced touchdown. So there was a great play by a great young man doing something we don't coach. The special teams were fired up and recovered a fumble from a Lewis Berry punt. A few plays later, Rosie Snipes surrendered his body to the end zone. In their best defensive performance of the year, the Seminoles showed America the pride of this unit. When Alfonso Carriker dropped the Tar Heel quarterback for the last time, it was all over. Florida State had mauled North Carolina before a national audience 28 to 3. It gave us a chance to show the nation that we were a better football team than, uh, than our record. We had some articles in, in some of the Atlanta newspapers about maybe we shouldn't have been there, but we showed them. At the Peach Bowl, we sent a message to all our future opponents. Watch out for the Seminoles in 84. The Seminoles finished the season just 15 points shy of an 11-1 record. They were a point from dethroning a national champion. It's all part of Bobby Bowden's tradition of a proud past and a confident future. On behalf of the Florida State football team and its staff, I want to thank Sunbanks and all of its employees and supporters for sponsoring this 1983 Florida State highlight film.